you watched Game of Thrones, right, Julio? Yeah. Was it Littlefinger? He was the one that <laughs> he, he often talked about chaos being a ladder. Okay. You it, say that as if you're the first person to ever think of it. That's when Tywin Lannister told him after he tried to give him the speech. That's fair in radio, too. Yeah. You, you basically are presenting this as though you're the first one to ever present this in radio. Right. It, it, it applies in a lot of different ways, right? So the whole, the whole concept of college football is chaos is a ladder for a lot of teams. We get caught up in thinking that how things stand in the college football playoff rankings are going to stay that way from the day they debut to the conference championship games that are two weeks from this past weekend. But we know better than that. It's college football. The, the whole draw of college football is some of the crazier results that we end up getting. Like, who could have predicted South Carolina was going to drop 60-plus on Tennessee? And that was before Hendon Hooker had an injury. He's done for the season. That was They were down 18 points before he got hurt. Nobody could have predicted that from the Gamecocks. And that makes an interesting South Carolina-Clemson game this week. You look at the near misses for Michigan. I almost felt like I could feel a tremor in the force with Jillio and Michigan and all the time. Like you, you had please tell me there are some things in the drafts with Michigan and how things how they pulled that out at the end. Right? Um I actually feel bad for Michigan. Okay. They've had this season where they have been mostly dominant, mm-hmm. but their schedule's so bad that we're finally getting to the point where, okay, you can prove it, right? Blake Corum, their running back, has had an outstanding season. You saw it in real time. He he takes a helmet to the to the knee. It looked bad. He wasn't able to finish the game. I know he did a, a charitable event on Sunday mm-hmm. and, and said he'll be fine for the Ohio State game. I'm here to tell you, he, he's not going to be the same player in that game. So, I honestly, I felt bad for Michigan. I know they won the game, but I, more than anything else, when you get to this far in the season and win all of your games. You want to be at your best for the most important game, and I just don't think they will be. Meanwhile, TCU escaped with a field goal <laughs> in, a, in a tight one. All of this setup from the college football weekend is to make the point about North Carolina and how Saturday's result, their loss to Georgia Tech, is more frustrating than the actual result itself. As much as North Carolina had an outside chance at the college football playoff, it was almost set up as though the teams that needed to lose were going to lose or have scares – And Carolina can continue to look good with a Heisman Trophy candidate in Drake May and at least enter the conversation and then set things up in the ACC championship against Clemson and let things fall where they may after that, right? But you can't do that when it finally got to you for the Tar Heels. It's the, uh, what's, what's the little scale? If you continue to mess around, you will eventually find out. And that's kind of been the story of North Carolina season. Every rational fan understands in Chapel Hill that they have been on the good side of these one-score games, where years of being on the wrong side of the one-score games have finally been paid off, right? You've paid enough of the karma has finally come back to you. And the defense has made one stop to put the offense in a position where they can go and win the game. But Carolina fans have understood, if you continue to do this, it's going to bite you in the ass at some point. And that's exactly what happened against Georgia Tech, where the offense cannot be perfect night in, night out. They weren't perfect in the second half, and Georgia Tech found a way to win that game in ugly fashion. Yeah, I've been consistent in my um, admiration of Josh Downs Mm -hmm. and North Carolina. As much as we talk about Drake May, Josh Downs really kind of unlocks all of the good things that Drake May can do and makes him be the best player that he can be. And not 100%. He was clearly not healthy he was only targeted twice to the point where i had to text ross martin because of my own fantasy football <laughs> interest i'm like is is downs hurt he's like well you know i look on that punt return and then he drops the would be winning touchdown yeah and i hate it for him i do because he has had an outstanding season and i hope he has a redemptive moment either against state or or against clemson because he was so he's been so good this whole year, mm-hmm. that it, he should not be defined by the one play that he could not make, and it, you could see it happen in real time. Mm-hmm. He just took his head off the ball. You know, it's almost like he couldn't believe how wide open he was either. Yeah, another great job by Phil Longo, uh, Carolina's offensive coordinator, make a play. I, I would have kicked the field goal there mm-hmm. because I think their defense was playing in such a way, and I think Georgia Tech's offense was playing in such a way. That they could have got, they were down four, mm-hmm. so they could. Have, I think they kicked a field goal. That would have been that was my only complaint. I would have kicked the field goal, 
played defense, gotten the ball back, and tried to win it with a field goal or downs again. But it, it comes out in the wash. You call a great play. You have your best player in the end zone wide yeah. open, and he just can't complete the play. You, you, you take that every single time. You take that every single time. And to your point about the defense, I'm not so sure. I, I think Carolina understood that the defense was probably giving him as much as they possibly could to be in that game, even though they had a 17-point lead. But on a third and nine, where you could have gotten the yeah. ball back, they end up being gashed, and the play gets extended, the drive gets extended, and off they go. Speaking of that drop pass, here's Drake May. North Carolina quarterback on downs, dropping that pass in the end zone. And to Julio's point, it ain't going to define downs this season, which has been outstanding. Oh, yeah, I mean, he's obviously down, but, I mean, I mean the plays he's made throughout the year, um, what a player. Um, things he's done for Carolina. You know, one play's not going to define him. Um, you know, how many plays he's made uh, versus that one. I mean, you know, he's going to be down on himself. That's the type of guy he is. And, uh yeah, I, I told him if we got the ball back, I was still going to come right back to him. Um, he's the best player you know, we got. So, uh, uh, and I love that kid. He's a great player. That's Drake May, North Carolina's quarterback on that drop pass. Here's Mac Brown, head coach, North Carolina. on And, and Mac, I, I always give Mac a lot of credit. He doesn't pull punches. He's telling you exactly. He, he will telegraph things in press conferences, and he'll tell you after the fact. Uh, about how things are going on and as successful as they've been this season he was certain he was worried about the maturity learning how to win getting used to winning not taking these things for granted and they were up 17 nothing and he viewed that as a problem uh, congratulations to georgia tech they played better than we did they coached better than we did and obviously won the game uh, very disappointing for us uh, uncharacteristically we really played poorly on offense we dropped passes we had six sacks we were 4 of 14 on, on third downs. We were 2 of 4 on fourth downs, which we've been so good at. And, and we only scored twice out of five times in the red zone and left a lot of points on the board. So um, give them credit. They were 8 of 15 on third downs, 3 of 3 in the red zone, and kept the ball about 35 minutes. So um, I didn't do a good job. I didn't have them prepared. I thought we were mature enough to, to – uh, play in what would be called a trap game. I thought we we're beyond that after Virginia, uh, but we obviously weren't. That's Mac Brown, North Carolina head football coach, uh, on the loss to Georgia Tech. So UNC finally gets caught in the whole mess around, find out, and they eventually found out against Georgia Tech. But this happens before NC State. This happens before the ACC championship game. They're still the coastal champs. NC State, on the other hand, their loss a little bit different in demeanor in that they can't seem to pull out of a, a spiral right now. And it gets to the point where Ben Finley takes snaps at quarterback for the Wolfpack. They can't get anything going against Louisville. And here's Dave Doran, head coach at at NC State, on you know if he intended to play Ben Finley, who's been around the program for a while now. He's been taking scout team reps. Uh, obviously, did not overtake MJ Morris or Jack Chambers, but here he is in this game against Louisville, and they couldn't really get much going. He had a great week of practice. You know, we weren't sure going into the week what it was going to look like because he'd been on the scout team. You know. And, and as you know, Jack can do some things for us, but, you know, we MJ's arm and then look good throwing the football in practice. And we got out there in warm-ups and same thing, you know, with the wind blowing, it was blowing hard, you know, felt like he gave us a better chance throwing the football. He did some good things, you know, he made some mistakes too, but he'll learn a lot from that film. So those are our two guys and, you know, possibly we'll have MJ back this week. We'll have to see. Now, Doran was asked about MJ Morris today at his press availability, Julio, and he wasn't exactly feeling the questions, uh, kind of adamant about like, I don't, I don't have to talk to you about health issues and nor do you need to know, uh, but they have hinted enough that MJ Morris could make a return against North Carolina. But I don't know if MJ Morris is really going to do much of anything. If NC state continues to be as conservative as they've been and they seem to bat for Dave's always had a resilient group. That's been kind of the calling cards for a Dave Dorn team while he's been at NC State. This team right now can't seem to get out of that. I'm not saying they can't, but it's a hell of it's a hell of a week to try to get out of it against North Carolina. Yeah, uh, as ugly as I was fearing the Wake Forest game to be, that turned out to be NC State's Super Bowl, and ever since then it's been just bad news, Brown. Yeah, and if you think these last two weeks are bad. Woo, you get on the wrong side of that thing on Friday. You're but, not going to like where you are. But here's the thing about North Carolina. You are I, not going to like where you are. I don't disagree with you. However. I'm just saying you want to avoid being on the wrong side of that thing on Friday. North Carolina, as we discussed with Georgia Tech, it, who knows? Maybe it came at the right time, right? You, 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 you get the lesson 
no, against no a lesson. team. There's no, I don't know. There's no lesson to be learned. You, it's just about pride on Friday. That's it. Pure and simple. Oh, well, for Carolina and State? Both of them. For both of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think the loss doesn't fundamentally change Carolina's season to me. No, I'm agree. I'm gonna, they, I agree. They're still on the coastal. They've had an outstanding season. Yeah. They could win 10 games. Even if they don't beat, even if they do, they can still beat Clemson, of course. Mm hmm. They haven't won the ACC championship since 1980. Right. So that would be a hell of a, a hell of a year. And you're not going to look back and go, oh, man, we lost to Georgia Tech. The playoff committee was blocking you from being in the playoff. Yeah. Not anything else. Yeah. The truth of the matter. Well, if anything, with the college football playoff, with some of the stuff as we started the conversation with, Clemson might find themselves back in the equation with some of the scares and some of the losses that we saw. It'll be curious to see what happens on Tuesday with Clemson and how they rank them.